Okay, so uh, today we are going to use the microscope and I'm going to show you how to focus a slide in the microscope, how to observe a slide and try to find different depths within that slide. So we have for the actually focusing uh, exercise the e-slide and then uh, we'll be using the color thread slides for the finding of the depth of uh, a sample in the microscope. So here we have in this cabinet the microscope and uh, the first important part of using a microscope is to have it properly stored and also to transport it well into your area where you will be working at. So if you see, we have uh, many microscopes in here and they have this uh, covering that helps them to protect from dust. And also we have uh, this uh, good arrangement so in the numbers, so each microscope we will go into a particular spot. So in order to transport it, uh, you will have to remove this first because you have to grab the microscope from a part that is called the arm and, and <clears throat> this one will interfere a little bit. So I usually put it in here uh, but you can also grab it uh, under this uh, covering and then uh, transport it. But I, I prefer to do that. Okay, so <clears throat> when you grab it, uh, lift it a little bit from the base, which is this part, and then uh, make sure that you have a good grasp on it because you don't want the, uh, the microscope to, to fall down. These are very expensive. I think the minimum that one costs is like $1,500. So it's a very useful uh, instrument and very expensive. So once you do that, you lift the other part and you put your left hand, your palm on the base, while your right hand, you, uh, you grab it on, on here on the arm. And then you have a nice grip of it and then keep it close to your, to your body never away, never tilted, just in this position. It's kind of almost vertical, the way it's supposed to be on the countertop. So let's go here into the countertop. And when you're going to put it in the countertop, you never let it fall like that, okay? So you have to be gentle. So you put it not on the edge, like you, you use like four to five inches away and then this is the cable that provides the electrical supply and then you will connect it into your, to your uh, device, to, to your outlet. Now, whenever you're done with it, of course you have to unplug it and then uh, wrap it in this area as well. Wrap it in a really nice fashion and never even for normal electronics or other devices never pull it from this part you have to pull it from this this base the the one that goes into the outlet and then <clears throat> before i explain you the uh, part uh, the procedure of how to focus i'm going to tell you what are the parts of a microscope so these are the eye pieces and you have to inspect all of these pieces before you use them. Okay, so this is the eyepieces. These lens that you see here inside are the ocular lenses. And then <clears throat> this is the arm. All of this is the arm. This is the base. This is the stage. These are the stage clips that holds the slide, the microscope slide. This is known as no nose piece. And then all of these tiny metal parts that you see here are the objective lenses. And at the tip of the objective lenses, you have the actual lens in which you can magnify the slide that you are looking at at different magnifications. Now, the ocular lenses usually magnifies the image 10 times. And these objective lenses, they magnify it at different uh, magnification times. Now, underneath the stage, we have 
this diaphragm. And the diaphragm, it is used to uh, change the amount of light that will pass from this light source and the condenser into the slide. So <clears throat> this one, usually don't, you don't move it because we actually set it up to a particular amount of light that it's supposed to go into the slide, but you just leave it like that. Now, <clears throat> in here, on the sides of the arm, you see a couple of knobs. This is the course knob that moves the stage up and down at great distance, and this is the fine, knob, fine uh, knob, which allows the fine movement of this stage. And here on the other side of the base, you have the actual switch to turn on the the power supply so you can put light into this light source. And then <clears throat> you have this knob that increases or decreases the amount of light that goes through the uh, power supply and the condenser. And then these couple of pieces will move the stage clips in this direction. So this upper one moves to back and front, while this one, the tinier one, the one in the bottom part, it will move the stage clips to the sides. Okay, so these are the parts of the microscope. Any problem that uh, you might have before using it, you're supposed to uh, let, let us know. And uh, things that are important so you never touch the lenses with your fingers or any other objective uh, or on, on any other object also when you're cleaning the lenses you use a special uh, when they're dirty you use a special uh, paper which is subjective lens paper and then you also have to leave the objective lens when you're storing it at this lowest magnification lens, which is 4x. And at some point, uh, you always have to put it back where it's, it's supposed to be. You shouldn't have any loosened parts and anything that you see wrong, you're supposed to let us know. And uh, you never leave the slide on the stage. Okay, so <clears throat> then let's start uh, doing this exercise for how to uh, turn on the uh, microscope and how to start focusing. So again, you turn on the light, as you see there, and then you grab your slide, and when you're grabbing slides, you usually handle them by the edge, like this. You don't touch the slide, and you will put them into the stage. Once you put them into the stage, you have to put the area that it belongs into this part where you see the light coming through. So this is the area that we'll be focusing, the E letter. And you will put it in there. You move to the sides, the stage clip and you have it there in the center. Once you do that, you look through the ocular lens. It's up to you. Uh, it, at the beginning, it takes time to kind of get used to your uh, eyes looking through the ocular lens, but it's up to you whether you want to look with the two eyes open or only with one. And at some points, some people, uh, I have, uh, seen it before in myself as well. When you're looking through the ocular lens, for some reason, if you get too close, you start looking at your uh, eyelashes. So <clears throat> that's something to, to keep in mind. And then you look in there, and then the first thing that you will be using is your course knob to bring the stage up to the level where you can see the E letter. 
and you don't have to see it uh, really well focused but in there just by moving this I saw it uh, pretty well once you use the lower magnification which is the one with the red ring which actually it's uh, amplifying or magnifying the image four times you move into the next now in order to find the actual number of total number of times that an image is magnified all you need to do is multiply the number of times that your lenses the objective lenses magnified times the one that it is magnified by the ocular lenses. Like I mentioned before, ocular lenses usually magnifies 10 times. There are some that magnifies 20 times, but usually the ones that you use is, is 10 times. So if you multiply then 10 times from the ocular lens times four for the lower magnification objective lens that we are using right now, four times 10, that will be 40. Okay, and then from there, you move into the next objective lens, always grabbing by this area. You never grab the objective lenses with your hands because you can contaminate the objective lens, you can damage it. And these are the, actually out of these uh, parts of the microscope, these are the most expensive ones, the objective lenses. So you move into the next then, which is the medium magnification, which magnifies 10 times. So 10 times 10, you will be looking at an image in here that is now 100 times amplified or magnified. So if you look again through the objective lens, you see a greater magnification of the image. And at some point, I had to move the stage a little bit towards the the right because since you're magnifying more you're seeing less of the field okay so what I will do is just move to the right which I already did and what I see it's an inverted image why because it's like uh, what happens with our with our eyes okay every time that you use a lens to magnify uh, you you have uh, this inversion of the image in, in the case of optics, okay? But in our eyes, uh, we have this crossing of the optic nerve which help you to actually see the images as they, as they present, okay? Through the different portions as well of the eye, not only the optic nerve. So what I'm doing right now is using this, the fine, uh, focusing knob to fine tune whatever I'm seeing in the image. And now I see a very clear image. Um, and then from there, I can move into the high magnification lens. At some point, uh, this will be my last magnification that I will use. I, I will not move into the highest objective lens, which is the oil immersion lens, because this is, an, this is not a micro, uh, microscopy image of microbiology. Only you use uh, this type of objective lens, which is the oil immersion lens, whenever you are using uh, this uh, microbiology slide. The, Slides that we'll be using for Anatomy and Physiology 1 are gross images at some point, so they don't need this big, big uh, magnification. So now we are in the highest, uh, or the, sorry, the high magnification lens, which magnifies 40 times. So if you multiply 10 times from the ocular lens times the 40 from the high magnification, you have a total of 400 times magnification. So now I suppose to see less of the letter E in here. And again, I have to move the actual stage with the clip, uh, the mover of the stage. Uh, so I will move 
a little bit back because I'm seeing only one edge of the E and that's uh, how I center in my field of vision which is whatever I see here and mm, what I'm going to do is find focus with this little knob in here and then I have a uh, finish looking at it uh, uh, at the better definition that I can see keeping in mind <coughs> that you have every time that you magnify the image uh, less field of vision at some point but you see a greater magnification and at some point as well it is important to know that whenever you're looking at a field uh, in the microscope you will be looking at something circular like this and then the field of vision in order for referring to someone to look that you're not yourself, uh, if you want to say to someone else who uh, might be interested in whatever you're looking, in order for, for you to refer to this person, okay, I'm looking at this, uh, you can divide then your uh, field of vision into quadrants if you want, like having an upper right quadrant, upper left, lower left, lower right, or what you can do is think about as your field of vision as if it was a clock. So you can refer, if you have an image that will be here at this part saying, okay, it's at 12 o'clock. If you have something here it will be one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so that's how you can refer. And also here in, the, uh, in some of the microscopes, not all, we have actually an arrow that you can only see through the ocular lens that you can move by moving a little bit this part and then uh, it will move your arrow <coughs> and with the arrow you can point exactly at the image that you're looking at. So again you always <coughs> stop in AMP at the higher magnification, uh, sorry high magnification lens, the one that has the blue band around okay and you don't use the one for object uh, oil immersion oil in which you have that white band around and you always move from low to medium medium to high if you cannot magnify it high you go back to medium if you cannot magnify or uh, have good definition of medium you go back to low but you never start magnifying with the high right away even though you might have a lot of experience, you might have work in a lab, something like that, you never start like that. It always goes by step. And at some point, if you see these objective lenses, they have an increasing length. So uh, <clears throat> if uh, at some point you try to go beyond with this uh, coarse magnification, of whatever is the closeness of the slide against the objective lens, you can damage the lens. And this immersion oil, it is designed for always use oil on the top of the slide. So when you have it in there, you will have a piece of oil, uh, sorry, uh, a bottle with oil, and then you will put on top of the slide when you have it here on the stage, you put a drop of oil so you can have an interface of oil between the objective lens and the actual slide because you don't want to have direct contact of this objective uh, lens, the oil immersion lens, which at some point this one is the only one that can touch the slide, but it cannot touch it dry because uh, you will damage the actual lens. So you have to have oil in, this, in it. And once you use this uh, uh, immersion oil objective, you will clean it with this paper that I told you. And then you don't use this paper to clean the rest of the objective lenses because if you do, you will be contaminating and adding oil into, this, uh, into these lenses. And at some point, the oil with time, it will dry out and it will be hard to get rid of it will dry over the surface of the lens, it will be hard to get rid of. And 
Uh, if you use a solvent like alcohol, uh, you can detach the glue from the lens that is holding the, the oil. Now, yes, we use some, uh, some occasionally we use these uh, wipes with alcohol to clean up these lenses, but it is better to, to use this uh, lens paper, which is very fine. You never use paper towels, Kleenex or anything. This, this, uh, this uh, tissue, the, the objective lens tissue is very specialized and it's very expensive. So you don't use it to clean your table and so on. Okay, so you're done with the experiment of how to focus. What would you do next? So you will grab again this nose piece by this rubber band. You never grab it by here. Then you will move into the next objective lens, which is the medium size, and then into the low, and then you will drop the stage a little bit then you withdraw your your sample your slide put it back always into the corresponding box in this case is e-slides and then uh, you cover your box turn off your microscope disconnect the cable carefully uh, wrap your cord around and then uh, transport it back and then if this one doesn't want to hold well you just slide it under one part of the cable and that's as much as you can. What would you do if you want to move your microscope from one area of the countertop into another one? You never drag it when it's the base is completely is direct in contact with the surface of the countertop. You lift it a little bit and then you move it into the next area. Another thing that you shouldn't be doing while you're working with the microscope in the countertop, have these cord hanging uh, because people might be walking and uh, uh, by mistake they can be dragging the cord and then they will drag down the microscope. Never play while you are uh, working with the microscope. Always in any experiment that you're doing you're supposed to be focused into what you do and never leave the slide. So I'm going to show you then how to transport it back and then uh, you will know how to uh, store it. So as you see in this, the objective, uh, the ocular lenses are facing toward the wall. So that's what I'm going to do. And then and that's it I will see you in the next video